Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is the principles of forensic science. There are seven main laws of principles of forensic science. So let's study them one by one. First is Locard's principle of exchange. Now this is the most famous principle. This was given by Edmund Locard, who is a French scientist, and hence the name Locard's principle of exchange or Locard's exchange principle. Now this principle states that whenever someone enters or exits an environment, something physical is added to and removed from the scene of crime. Now this means that whenever two objects are coming in contact with each other, they are going to exchange certain segments from each other. Like for example, see here in the picture. Now someone has touched the glass with his hands. Due to which what happened is this transfer of fingerprint from the hand of the person onto the glass surface and from the glass surface certain dust or tiny particles would have transferred onto the hands of the person who touched it. So what happened here is there was exchange of things from both sides. Fingerprints from the hands of the person and dirt over the surface of the glass onto the surface of the person or the fingertips of the person from where the fingerprint was exchanged. So in order to sum up we can say that every contact leaves a trace. Next uh, Edmund Locard's principle the, this principle as I have said means every contact by a criminal leaves behind a trace and Edmund Locard was also called the Sherlock Holmes of France because he belonged to France. So this principle is the most applied principle in every criminal investigation whenever we find any evidence on the crime scene that is somehow associated with this principle that is the principle of exchange. Next we talk about law of progressive change. This law states that everything changes with the passage of time. So nothing is going to remain same as we go along. Everything is going to change somehow, progress somehow, change into something else. They are not going to remain same. And this has a major effect on the criminal investigation. Uh, not just the evidence, evidence will change, not just the evidence but also the crime scene is going to change if you have not collected the evidence from there. For example, if you have collected blood from the crime scene and you have not preserved it properly, then it is going to change progressively. According to time, that blood is going to get degraded and this mostly happens in the biological samples other than blood, there's uh, saliva, there's urine, semen, all these samples will get degraded very fast if not preserved properly. Other than this, if the crime scene has not been searched and it has been left, then also the samples present over there are going to get degraded and due to uh, and this is happening due to the law of progressive change. Next is the principle of comparison. This means that like can only be compared to like. For example, if there is a question blood sample, then that blood sample can only be compared with another blood sample. It cannot be compared with a saliva sample or a urine sample or a semen sample. Blood can only be compared with a blood sample. Similarly, tool marks can be compared with tool marks only, not with bite marks. Similarly, bite marks can be compared with bite marks only. So, only like things can be compared to like. If you need to compare two things, then compare with the like objects. Also, like for example, if a question writing you have got a question writing and that writing it is written with a ball pen then the sample the specimen sample that you're going to take that also has to be taken with a ball pen only not with a gel pen not with a font fountain pen it has to be taken with a ball pen only also next another example can be that if a writing has been found on the wall then the sample that is to be taken that is also to be taken should be taken 
on to a wall only it's not like you can tell the suspect to write down on a paper the same thing to write down on a paper no you need to tell that person to write it on to the wall only because the orientation of your hand is also going to change your or modify your handwriting somehow so you need to be exact with the with what you are comparing if it's written on a wall then the specimen also should be taken on to a wall only then comes the law of individuality this means that each and every object whether it is natural or man made it has its own individuality which is not duplicated in any object so in short it means that every object is unique every object has its own individual characteristics that are unique to that particular object only so every object is unique and that it has some differences from the other object that fall into the same category also like for example currency notes currency notes look alike like 500 rupee note is going to look exactly like all the 500 rupee note looks mostly the same but they're not same they have different serial number so they every each and every object is going to have its own uh, individuality then comes the principle of analysis. The analysis can be no better than the sample analyzed. So analysis of this sample is the most important thing. If the sampling has not sampling of the uh, specimen has not been done properly then it is going to lead to contamination and degradation which will make the examination completely useless because the sample is degraded it is contaminated with some other thing and that is going to make the entire investigation useless that specimen is going to be completely useless if it is not properly sampled and if it is contaminated the principle emphasizes the necessity of correct sampling so correct sampling is very important and correct packaging so that there is no contamination so correct sampling and correct packaging is important for effective use of experts only then experts can give us correct results if these two things are done then comes law of probability all identification either definite or indefinite are made consciously or unconsciously on the basis of probability now probability is a mathematical concept it determines the chances of occurrence of a particular event in a particular way out of a number of ways in which the event can take place or fail to take place with equal facility so each and everything that's happening in order to solve a crime is somehow based on the law of probability because otherwise the range would increase immensely so you need to cut short the range because otherwise solving the crime is going to take a lot of time and energy so for that probability method is used for example if four people are suspected to be involved in that crime and two of them are having the shoes that have similar kind of footprint that is present on the crime scene so the other two now can be neglected because the probability of the first two the ones whose footprints matched with the those present at the crime scene the probability of them being the actual culprit are more then comes law of circumstantial fact facts do not lie men can do and do the fact that your fingerprint was present at the crime scene is not lying but you telling that you were present somewhere else that can be a lie but the fact how come your fingerprint was present at that crime scene you need to answer that question because that is something that cannot be false but you can be lying so facts do not lie men can do and they do lie so this was all about the seven principles of forensic science i hope you understood all of them if yes please like and comment if you have any problem share my channel guys as much as you can with your fellow forensic scientist and do not forget to subscribe my channel and also hit that bell icon thank you